Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Families face long searches, DNA tests to find relatives killed in train crash. U.S. calls partnership with India most consequential. And heat wave in Bangladesh leads to school closures, power cuts. And now for all the details. After India's worst train accident in two decades that killed 288 people and left nearly 1,200 injured in the Balasore district of the eastern state of Odisha, deceased families are facing long searches as they were seen waiting for DNA tests to determine the body. Mohammed Inam ul -Haq has been struggling for over four days to find his missing brother and to claim his nephew's body from the many lying in city hospitals. Desperate families searched hospitals and mortuaries in search of their loved ones, but the gruesome condition of the corpses made identification a challenge. Nearly 100 bodies remain unclaimed in several hospitals and mortuaries across Odisha, as of late Monday, officials have said. There is जिसका होगा उसको दे दिया जाएगा तो डीएनए टेस्ट कैसे करेंगे क्योंकि डीएनए टेस्ट मैं अपने भाई से भाई भाई का दूसरा बच्चा के साथ करवा रहा हूं मैं दो भतीजा था एक भतीजा जो मिल गया है उनका डीएनए इनका डीएनए दोनों का मैच करवाऊं the train services are back to normal in Balasore, including the Coromandel Express, where the deadly train accident took place. Railway staff are working day and night in the district to bring normalcy as soon as possible. And United States on Tuesday called partnership with India as one of the most consequential relationships. U.S. State Department spokesperson Vedant Patel, highlighting the close collaboration between the two governments, said Washington is looking forward to deepening economic ties and enhancing security cooperation with the South Asian nation. The statement from Patel comes in response to a question raised over Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's state visit to Washington later this month. U.S. lawmakers have also invited Modi to address a joint meeting of Congress. The United States is working to deepen its ties with India in its efforts to push back against China's expanding influence worldwide. I uh, reiterate again that our partnership with India is one of the most uh, consequential. It is a consequential relationship. We work closely with the Indian government on some of our most vital priorities and we look forward to uh, hosting them uh, here uh, later this month and continuing to deepen uh, our engagement on these issues. Well, in a report released on Tuesday, the World Bank has projected Pakistan's economy to grow by 2% in the upcoming fiscal year, in contrast to the target of 3.5% set by Shehbaz Sharif-led government. In the report, Global Economic Prospect, the lender said continuing effect of last year's floods, compounded by political crisis in the country, have limited growth to 0.4% in the current fiscal year. The projection comes ahead of the annual budget of Pakistan, which is facing its worst economic crisis due to months of delay in securing funding from the International Monetary Fund. IMF's $1.1 billion funding is critical for Pakistan to unlock other bilateral and multilateral financing to avert a debt default. And the acting governor of a northeastern Afghan province, Nisar Ahmed Ahmadi, has been killed in a car bombing on Tuesday. Officials have confirmed claimed by an affiliate of the ISI group. The driver was also killed and six people were wounded in the blast, which was the first known attack on a Taliban official in Afghanistan in several weeks. Since the return of the Taliban to power in August 2021, ISIS has been a major threat to the de facto authorities of Afghanistan. They have been behind several brutal attacks. The Taliban administration has been carrying out raids against members of Islamic State, which had claimed several major attacks in urban centers. 
The United States top official Robert Caproth accompanied by U.S. Ambassador to Colombo Julie Chung met with Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe on Tuesday and reaffirmed the United States' long-standing support for the country spanning over 75 years of diplomatic relations. He reiterated the commitment of the United States to working together with Sri Lanka to achieve its shared vision of a stable, prosperous country. Caproth and Chung also met with the country's foreign minister. Ali Sabri, after they discussed the progress of IMF engagement and debt restructuring and how the assistance provided by the U.S. has helped Sri Lanka to emerge from the crisis. The South Asian Island Republic plunged into crisis last year as its foreign exchange reserves ran out, food and energy prices spiraled and protesting mobs forced the ouster of the country's then president. And frequent power cuts amid soaring heat waves in Bangladesh have made lives difficult in the South Asian country. Residents are unable to run fans to cool themselves as weather officials warned relief was not imminent. Take a look. A searing heat wave in Bangladesh spurred the closure of primary schools this week. As Bangladesh Meteorological Department warned, there was no end in sight for the heat in the coming days. The heat wave conditions have also triggered frequent power cuts across the country, worsening conditions for the residents. Bangladesh's junior minister for power and energy, Nasrul Hamid, has warned the power cuts may continue for two more weeks as the fuel shortage has sparked shutdowns of several power generating units in the country, including its biggest coal fired plant. <laughs> The frequent power cuts have also made a dent in country's economy, including its crucial apparel sector that accounts for more than 80% of its exports. The revenue loss is likely to exasperate issues around the country's dollar reserves, which have plunged to a seven-year low and limited its ability to pay for fuel imports. And residents of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir have a special affinity for stones and stone carving has been an important part of life in the valley. But they say they are worried as the historic stone carving tradition is losing its sheen. Stone carving has been an important part of the valley, whether it is veneering technique used in building Kashmiri homes or the use of stones in gardens. They say there is still a high demand for pestles, mortars and hammam slates, but this art is dying due to lack of manpower and people rejecting this as a career. Over the past two decades, following social stigma and modernization, new gadgets and tools are replacing the traditional ones, they said. Set up on the roadside at Sempora, there are workshops where stone masons create amazing artifacts by their hard work. Kashmir Valley has a very rich old cultural and traditional history and stone carving is one of them. Here बहुत अच्छा है क्योंकि हम पढ़ा लिखे हैं कि अब कोई नौकरी नहीं मिली तो हम इसी से वापस तो होगे बहुत अच्छा काम है। Well that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India, breaking news and views from India.